what is a base software again? So base software is a software that looks like a real sheet, guys. It's not a real sheet. If you're new to my channel, it, it just, it's just a menu, guys. It's just a UI of a sheet like this. But when a sheeter downloads it and tries to use it in the game, it doesn't give them any of this stuff here. It just messes with the game instead uh, in funny ways. So that is what a, a bait software is. So this is the first thing they see when they run the bait software. As you can see now when I ran it, it started with giving me these terms and conditions. So the first thing that they, they, they will see is this. and they can't like they have to accept these conditions if they want to use the bait software this is basically the final chance they have to stop cheating don't cheat guys it's bad so the first thing i said is i accept that i am using csgo software at my own risk even if i get banned or worse and then guys i literally list in here all the things that are going to happen to them every everything guys it lists how it's gonna work, it's gonna you know, do that, this and that, and in-game replay files, everything guys, it's in here, but people don't even read this. But if they try to start it, it won't let them, you must accept the terms and conditions, if they close it, no problem, nothing is gonna happen to them. So, so some people downloaded it and never started it, maybe they read this one, I guess. <laughs> Nobody reads that, but some, uh, some guys do, because I see in the, I, I, I track the statistics of how the usage of the software is, and I see some people do it, which is fine. If they're not going to try to cheat, I'm not going to punish them. So they accept it, and then is where they have, you know, they have given me permission to do all these things to them. So what happens is they load into the bait software. This one has been called Blue Flame, guys. This has been the one that I've been marketing for the last couple of weeks. No one knew about it. No one knew about it, guys. I've been keeping it a secret. And this is how it's been looking. We updated the graphics a lot, guys. The old version looked like it was homemade by a 10-year-old, which was me. But anyways, uh, this is the new version. I, I took some inspiration of some, you know, I Googled how the sheets look for CSGO, and I took some inspiration. <laughs> I copy-pasted, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. No, but I, I really took some inspiration of some real sheets, and I wanted it to look, you know, realistic, legit, and all that. So this is what the shooter sees when he loads in. And the first thing they will try is like they try to click on something and it will say you need to inject the DLL first. And this is just BS, guys. There's no injection in my bait software. This is all just a hoax to make it look realistic. Doesn't matter what they click and they click here. This is what's going to happen. You need to join a matchmaking game before injecting. So basically the bait software tells them this is only going to work in matchmaking. So if they really want to try to cheat, it means they have to do it in matchmaking. And if they do that, that's when we are punishing them. And a lot of people are asking me, ah, oh, well, why, why don't they just, when they see it's not working, why don't they just close it? Why, why would they continue to use it when it obviously doesn't get them any benefits? Like, look here, guys, they don't get any sheets. We are against cheaters, right? So they don't get any wall hacks, nothing, and why would they continue to use it? So that is the thing. The first step that we have to really punish them is that when they close this one, it actually doesn't close the software. Because in the terms and conditions, it states very clearly that it will, when they start it, it's actually started as a background process. So which means this is just a UI. It doesn't matter if they close this one. The software is actually still running. So it will still punish them. So that is the number one key to actually punish them, uh, them when they're trying to play matchmaking. But let's just say that we loaded into uh, our map here. So we have our maps here, map classes. We have the Mirage. Where's Mirage? There's Mirage. So this is one of my map classes. It inherits from the base class map, all the properties and stuff. And the first thing we do is we set up all the trip wires. You initiate a new one like this. So you create a new one. You have some options. You have points, which is the coordinates in the game where you want it to happen. And you have a seed index, which is the height of where you want it to trigger. If it only wants it to trigger at a certain height of the map, for example, if you're jumping out the window on Mirage. So let's say if I want to have a tripwire right here in this, this doorway right here, I could just do it like this. Uh, I, can, I can go to this corner in the game. And if I have the bait software running, which I don't, I need to get the coordinates for each corner. And I built a small function into the uh, bait software to deal with that. So I press P, which is hotkey when the bait software is running. I press one time for this corner and I can go to this corner. I don't have to look down, I just do it because it's easy. So there's two, there's two corners and then I go to this corner 
there's three corners, and then I go to this corner. So basically, every time I press P, now you're going to see in the left corner, in the debug output, you can see the coordinates for the tripwire. And that means every, so x, y coordinates for every uh, corner of the tripwire. So if I go back into this one, you can see now that I can add a new tripwire. So let's start with, I'm just going to copy this one for now. This is just going to be for debugging, guys. It's not going to be here. So I copy this one, and I copy the coordinates down here. I don't use the set one because it I want it to trigger the no matter how high or low. So I can put this one at zero. But these are the coordinates for the tripwire. And then I have some settings. I can decide how many percent chance it should trigger. So for instance, if I want it to trigger 100% of the time, like every time someone steps on it, I put 100. And I can choose which team or both teams if I just leave this one blank. But let's do both teams for now to make it simple. I need to call it something. Let's call it B. Uh, doorway let's call it B doorway and then B doorway on triggered we're gonna this is uh, the event that we're gonna do something when it's triggered so this is gonna be the method that we run when it's triggered let's call it <coughs> burp let's call it burp way <laughs> let's call it burp way <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> I need to add it to uh, the list of all tripwires that is looped through and checked every, mil I think every 50 milliseconds is checked all the tripwires if they're being tripped. So let me go down here just to add it right now. So I'm just gonna copy this one for now, which is the man control one, and let's call it burpway, which was the name of it, and I send in the tripwire. But let's delete all of this and start with just doing a pro, oh, uh, 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 oh that was wrong, program game game console send command so this this class has a send command send console command say hello burp way that is perfect guys let's 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 do that can you guys see the code so basically this is what's going to happen when this one is triggered okay. so now we can see if i enter this one it should say something in the game let's go let's go as you can see it said hello burp way and guys as you can see when i run here it doesn't trigger again because by default, a tripwire only triggers once per round. It resets at the end of each round. So now it's already been triggered, so it's not going to trigger again. But if I want to, I have some custom stuff I can set up for my, for my burp way. There we go. Actually, I can add it here. I can just do a new line and initiate, use the class. And I can dot. And we have uh, reset on leave equal true. So you can change this one, and it will make it <laughs> reset every time you leave it. So let's see if this works, if I reload the, the bait software. Oh, there we go, there we go. So that was one time, let's run again. There we go, guys. As you guys can see, it keeps on, keeps on triggering. Works pretty good. A disclaimer, guys. I'm not a professional developer for software ever. This is the second software I ever built in my life. The first one was the PUBG bait software, and this one is the second one, guys. But that said, of course, I have a background in other types of programming that's not software-based. Um, but this is the first software. So anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to show you. I did a lot of ugly stuff to get it working, but it works. It's good enough for something like a base software. I'm going to get to the send uh, console command now. And this is going to be a real hack, uh, that I'm a, a hacky way to do it, but you're going to see why I did it and how it works. So some people that maybe know something about programming will be like, yeah, but if you're only external and you're not writing any memory, how are you even able to send console commands to the game? Like, how is your software being able to modify the game by sending its own console commands? And this is where there's, I would say, there are three ways to do this. There's two good ways, and there's the one way I did it, which is horrible, but it still works, guys. And I like horrible solutions, okay? There is a console command called exec, all right? Exec blah. So what exec does is it will try to find a TXT file or a CF, like it's called CFG file, a text file on your computer that's called, if I write exec blah, it will look for blah uh, on your CSGO folder. And if this config file exists, it will run the console commands that are in this file. And guys, maybe you know where this is going. So basically, I had a big brain idea that what if I don't want to inject and I don't want to write memory and learn that or even do any of that, what if I just have my code generate this blah.cfg? Like, I, I create that file. So if we look inside the con send console command, I'm going to show you guys actually how it's done. 
So basically, we create a CFG file in the CSGO folder. We have uh, it's called sheeter.cfg. And whenever I want my code to run a console command, I just write that text to that file. I clean out the file and I write the commands. This is the some guys, this is some big brain, really ugly, but it works. This is ugly, but it works, guys. So I write my commands into that file, right? So then suddenly, if I wrote exec sheeter.cfg, then suddenly my commands would be, you know, in the game because the sheeter cfg would have the commands that I want to run. And now you're wondering, running, yeah, but well, how do you even put the exe sheeter then? Because you have to run this one as a console command, right? And now is the big brain x2, guys. This is so big brain that I can't even st start to imagine. Like it's, yes, how do you tell it? <laughs> how do you tell you it's got to execute the command? Yes, guys, I know. And this is the big brain I'm coming to. So when they start the bait software the first time, I actually edit the config and I bind, I think it's bind like F6 or something like that. No, F9, some, yeah, F9. So what it does is it adds to the config a new binding called F9, exec uh, sheeter about CFG. So, uh, CFG. So basically I add this key bind that normal normally uses and then I have the bait software, press the button when I want to access the CFG, guys, big brain, right here, guys. Look at it. Look at my big brain. So whenever I <laughs> this is so stupid, guys, but it works. So whenever I, s I write to that file, look here, guys. I write my commands to that file. I write it to the text file, and then look here, guys. Send input key press F9. So the software simulates pressing F9 on your keyboard. And that causes the game to actually run the console commands. So suddenly we can cause a lot of damage with the console, but it's never going to be, you know, a cheat because it's just console commands. And we don't need to inject to do it, which is, I call it the big brain. Guys, you saw it right here, the big brain move. <laughs> what if the cheater has F9 unbound? But that is the thing. When they start the base software, it adds that binding to the CFG. Like when they start the base software, it adds that key binding to the, because all, all, the all the things that you have here, my friend, all your settings in the game menus are stored in a file on your CSGO folder. So all I need to do is add that key binding or change it in that file and it will actually be added to your game. How I distribute it to the shitters is I, I, I made a website for the, for the bait software and I then marketed on Google you can pay Google for ads to, so that when people search on Google for different types of terms, like free hacks for CSGO, you pay for a certain ad space. So your like the top search result would be a, one of those ads that look like a search result, but it would actually be my, my website where they go to download it. And it works surprisingly good, guys. Uh, the only downside is obviously it costs a lot of money to market it, but uh, it's really successful because you don't have people being able to comment and say it's not working. Ooh, ooh, look at this, guys. This is the first time I'm showing this, guys. And the reason I'm showing it is because on Sunday, my new video is going to premiere. And I'm not marketing this anymore, guys. It's already served its purpose. This version with this name and all of this, I'm not going to use it anymore. This actually looks right. I told you, guys, I made the new version look better. I made it look legit, guys. So basically, this is the website that they've been going to, and all of it is just BS, of course. But look at this, guys. Even, we even had, had one of my most create a fake video for what, it, what supposedly is supposed to get. Anyway, so this has been uh, where they have been coming from the Google Ads. So as I said earlier, guys, I've been paying for Google Ads to show this website when they were searching for free hacks. What's the percentage of people who download the hack when they visit the site? That is interesting. Can we pull that up right now? I can probably, I have I, I, I've been tracking Google Analytics, guys. Let's see, maybe I can pull it up. Let, let me see. I don't even know, dude. It's probably not that high. Come on, like, to be honest, guys, don't think that every single person that clicks on the ad on Google downloads it. But I would say it's pretty high. Uh, I would say, it's, I would guess it's maybe 50% of uh, the people who click on the ad that actually downloads it. But you have to know that those 
not all of them end up giving me a replay for different reasons because there's so many steps that you have to go through first they have to commit to downloading it then they have to commit to actually running the software uh, and then uh, they have to actually accept the conditions as you saw earlier in this live stream they have to accept the conditions that show up for them to that, that, and the condition states exactly what's going to happen to them let's load this one in boys okay so this is the analytics of the l the, the most recent version guys anyway guys this this is so basically we've had let's see okay we have we had had this this is really legit guys we had almost 6,000 times pressing this button guys <laughs> every time they're like look because when, when they're loading into the game like if they're not in, in matchmaking we'll say they have to load into matchmaking right when they click it but if they're in matchmaking i'm sure they go out there and they're spamming this one like why is it not working Ugh. they're like they're clicking on this one like 150 million times so we have 6,000 clicks on this button how do you pay for the ads to get these clicks how much how much did you pay guys I'm gonna drop it right now, guys. Throughout all my videos, PUBG and CSGO combined, I've spent over $2,000, 2,000 big ones on marketing these softwares. This one is probably my least yet because to be honest, I already had the base software, the marketing was already working, I just tweaked it and it was good to go and I got the footage. I, and the problem is the previous video, guys, I used so much marketing, I got so many clips I didn't even end up using. Uh, so I, I, did, I overdid it a bit. I have so much clip that I never used in the video. Anyway, guys, what, what do we have more? We have punishments, guys. We have 3,200 punishments. And these are not, shouldn't include any like my testing and thing because I turn off the analytics for testing. And the conditions has been shown 4,000 times, guys. So out of 4,000, let's compare this one with how many actually downloads. We have 4,000 times the condition, actually that, that can be, for one person it can open up multiple times, I guess. But here you can see replays. Yeah, here we go. So we have upload success 131 times. But out of this, so now you can see how, how we're dropping fast. 133 times a replay has been uploaded. But out of these, I would say only 20% are actually worth even looking at. A lot of them is one round, they try it and they leave the game or whatever. And like some of them, and also we have a problem with a lot of uh, POV camps are actually corrupt. So they break the game when you try to load into them. So I would say maybe 75 of these actually worked. Let's see how many actually downloaded them because now you see how fast it's dropping. Let's see how many clicks we got. Download. So 726 downloads on this version and only 100, like 75 replays. Let's say it was 75. I don't even know, guys. It's like less than, I don't have the exact numbers how much I spent per replay, but it's quite a lot. As you guys can see, it's been downloaded a lot, but of the people who actually click, I wouldn't say it's that many because can I see how many entered the website too somewhere? We have uh, 1,500 people come from the ads, I guess. So I guess, and we had 180 replays. So you can see it drops down a lot. Not a lot of percent end up giving me a replay.